Hey there, friends. How's it going? My name is Kevin, and today we're playing AI Dungeon. You like how I just kind of sped through that there express intro? Now I'm ruining it by rambling. Anyway, I'm playing AI Dungeon, which is basically an adventure with infinite possibilities because AI is generating what happens. I'm interested to see how this goes because I feel like AI myself sometimes. Malfunctioning AI, but AI all the same. All right, let's pick my my setting. I'm thinking cyberpunk. <laughs> I just want to see NPCs glide around and cops spawn behind me throughout this. <laughs> Select a character. I'll be a punk. Enter your character's name. Punk man. <laughs> The AI is just gonna be like, ah, uh, I'm gonna break their AI. It just sounds like something a five-year-old would write. You are punk man, a punk living in the futuristic city of Zale. You have a small Zor blaster hidden in your jacket and a hollow band on your wrist. You wake up in a dark alley with bruises all over your body. You have no idea what happened. You stand up and see a bloody piece of Bionite. You once heard that Bionites were intelligent, but you never saw one before. And then it speaks to you. Okay, for, so story what happens next uh, do what do you do or say what do you say uh what do i say hey there friend my name is punk man <laughs> how is it going <laughs> The Bionite doesn't respond, but you feel a surge of emotions. You can feel fear from the Bionite. Happiness, sadness, and many more. Is that what you feel when I do my intro? <laughs> you're, you're happy to see the video, but you're also sad because it's not that fun. And just an overall sense of fear <laughs> from what might happen. Okay, I don't like this Bionite. I don't like feeling its emotions. Eat the Bionite. The Bionite <laughs> tastes like metal, but somehow feels like chewing on a ragdoll. It takes about a minute of gagging and vomiting but you eventually finish do burp <laughs> you burp i just wish there was someone there to, to to pat me on the back for it you pass out again wait when did i pass out initially oh yeah i forgot i woke up <laughs> this is probably an endless loop it started with me waking in the alley and it ends with me falling unconscious in the alley i've just probably been eating bionite for the past few days all right so i'm passed out have a dream about cyberpunk being bug free and having lots of fun <laughs> this is not a very good dream you wake up feeling refreshed you take the bandana off your head and have a look at it i'm wearing a bandana god i am a punk so that's where he gets the name punk man i see eat the bandana <laughs> <laughs> I just gotta be eating everything. <laughs> oh my god, the story tried to escalate because it was like, this guy's just gonna stand here eating things all day. The next time you wake up, you find yourself surrounded by a mass of tiny black spiders. You get out your gun and shoot them. They're just normal spiders. Suddenly, the mutant dog attacks. Eat the mutant dog. <laughs> I will eat my way out of this, just like I've eaten myself out of every other situation. You feel the need to puke again. Simply hold the vomit in my mouth and I should be fine. The dog meat tastes very bad, but some it feels your stomach. You feel as if you ate a brick. You try to run away, but the mutant dog jumps on top of you and bites your throat. Wait, I thought I ate him. I thought I ate you. This is starting to actually just feel like a story that I wrote. This doesn't feel like AI. You choke to death as your blood is drained from your body. Yeah, he didn't listen. He didn't listen. He didn't care about the fact that I thought I had eaten him. What do you do? I rise again. <laughs> is that gonna work? I don't feel like that's gonna work. You see a darkness head you in the tunnel. Put your hands out in front of you. Suddenly you feel a large bright light and you lose consciousness wake up oh my god you wake up in the alley again still surrounded by small black spiders you take a deep breath and get up suddenly a group of mutants appear from the darkness my person has the ultimate plot armor like he should have died like 17 times all right there's only one way out of this eating but not in the way that you think eat myself that'll show them you cannot kill me if I've already eaten myself. <laughs> How's the AI doing? Mind-blowingly good. You stare at the mass of spiders, and before your eyes, they begin to move, consuming the black substance that was covering them. You no longer feel hungry. Wait, what? I don't feel hungry because I ate myself, or am I still alive? All right, let's try editing the overall story. The spiders form an arrow that points to a sign saying, All you can eat diner. <laughs> what will the AI make of that? You enter the diner and take a look around. Suddenly, a huge mass of black substance. Substance. Why is it all this huge instance of black something or other? Flies in the air and hits the glass window of the diner. Punk man calls his brother Al. <laughs> I don't know why I find that funny. It's just one is called Punk Man and the other is just Al, who is a window repair guy to come fix the window. It's all making sense now. The story is really starting to form. A waitress, who's also a mutant, enters the diner, approaches you. You 
you order a cup of coffee and some pancakes thanks can i get the same for my brother al i really want al to make an appearance who will be here soon <laughs> the waitress nods and goes outside while you wait for your order you notice the plate of pancakes and the glass of orange juice sitting on the counter suddenly you feel the urge to vomit vomit quickly and eat the vomit before the waitress gets back don't want to be embarrassed now do i you vomit on the floor and eat the pancakes as they're still very hot that's not what i said to do a man wearing a gas mask and a white suit enters <laughs> the diner oh hello al now you can fix that window it's so funny because it's just like oh yeah big massive black spiders just smash the window and then moving on i made you pancakes and juice <laughs> it just disregards that whole thing which i love because that's how i would write al begins to work on the window <laughs> i forced that person into being al al begins to work on the window and a small furry creature leaps through the window and bites al's left arm Arg! he screams waking you up i didn't even know i was asleep why am i asleep during all of this why did i go to sleep as he was fixing the window i'm still waiting on my order the waitress is coming back and i just vomited on the floor <laughs> i've had a bad day i'm gonna give al a lot of freedom here because if you'd notice, Al looks very similar to AI. You see that? One step ahead. What do you say? E. <laughs> I just wake up from my desk and have to go, E. The man looks at you. Smoke begins to come out of the gas mask. Where are the others? He asks in a monotone voice. I ate them. You respond. Dead? <laughs> no, they are still kicking. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try and be very direct here. Hey, Al. My brother... <laughs> Who, oh, why do I keep spelling it my brother? <laughs> my brother <laughs> who is fixing the window. Remember when we built that tree house? Al nods and the man unchains you. I was chained? <laughs> this is a weird restaurant. Lead the way. You take the chain off your neck and lead the mutant dog outside. The mutant dog follows you as you enter the tree house. Eat the dog. Like, I don't understand where he keeps coming from. Oh no, I just said it. I just said it. I said eat the dog. <laughs> now he knows my plan. Gears stands up as the mutant dog approach who is gears are they talking about al al do you sometimes go by the name gears al nods and says we used to work in a factory getting metal parts for suddenly the dog jumps near chain and devours al why is there so much eating here what do you say easy come easy go <laughs> i wanted him to be in the story but it just doesn't want him to be in it you get on your knees and pat the dog good dog you say let's see if we can get out of this i don't even know what we're in fix the window for free before the waitress gets back. You fix the window for free before the waitress gets back. You walk over to the diner and notice the waitress pulling up outside. You quickly sprint outside and climb through the broken window. What? So I was inside fixing the window. Then I walked over to the diner, which I was already in. And the waitress was pulling up, even though she was just gone outside for a minute anyway. And then I sprinted outside... You know, I was already outside and I climbed back in <laughs> through the window. What do you do? Shit on the floor. Honestly, I don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> Cyberpunk man or whatever his name is. It's just a confused individual. Was your friend of the dog? <laughs> she asks. The dog ate my friend, if that's what you're asking. We don't serve humans here. What? <laughs> you look at the waitress confused. Well, that's fitting. You need to clean the floor or get a new waiter if you want your food served the side of sarcasm. Say, I didn't shit on the floor <laughs> that was al <laughs> who is now dead she literally just saw him doing it <laughs> i'm like no that was al she looks at you with pity are you new here or something she says you will have to get used to the smell or get out of the diner before before what and are you saying get used to the smell that he created or what what are we talking about here but before you piss me off too much i'll tell you later okay the waitress turns to go back into the diner before I punch you in the face, that is. I don't know what that means. Punch the waitress in the face. Striking first. If she's threatening me, I'm I'm going to strike first. I want the upper hand. She threatened me, all right? The waitress turns around and you punch her in the face, knocking her to the ground. She looks up at you with anger. Is she dead? A small voice says, punk man turns to see the small voice belonged to a large version of 
Stuart Little? <laughs> I'm just writing as I'm making it up. He's a mutant, you say. It's what they do. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. He asked, is she dead? I'm not a mutant. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. You just wet yourself. <laughs> Wait, who is saying that? Hold on. He's a mutant, you say. It's what they do. Then Stuart Little says, I'm not a mutant. I say, yes, you are. Stuart Little says, no, I'm not. I say, you just wet yourself. Search the ground for rodent droppings there you go that'll prove my point wait i can edit it so he said if you must know sir i am ursa minor the mouse mutant <laughs> you're a mutant i thought i was just accusing him of being a mutant so i can edit this to i am stuart little <laughs> the mouse mutant and instead of saying you're a mutant i'll say i knew it say i loved you in stuart little two the search for Stuart Little. I I don't know. I don't. Was there even a Stuart Little too? <gasps> you say I loved you in Stuart Little too. The search for Stuart Little. You loved me in Stuart Little too? He's joking, sir. Who said that? You take the joke less well than Stuart Little did. Jumping up and kicking you in the face. What? Hold on a second. That's such a confusing sentence. Okay. He's joking, sir. Who said that? Me? <laughs> or? I take the joke less well than Stuart Little did, jumping up and kicking you in the face. Did I kick myself in the face? Or is Stuart Little after kicking me in the face? And if so, I took it less well than him, so what am I gonna do? I don't know if there's any other way uh, out of this other than eating Stuart Little. You eat Stuart Little. The joke's too much for the handle. You kick him in the face and he's killed instantly. <laughs> what was that? Eat the dead body of Stuart Little. God, I didn't imagine I'd be saying that today. I've never eaten a man before. You think he's you bite into Stuart Little's flesh. The flesh tastes like chicken. It's not the best meal you've ever had, but it's not that bad. I'm just gonna copy Stuart Little because I I'm saying this a lot, so I'm just gonna copy that. All right, go to Stuart Little's parents to confess. Your stomach feels weird after eating Stuart Little. You wake up and find yourself back in your room. It's now nighttime and your stomach is wrapped in bandages. Stuart Little begins clawing at your stomach from the inside, trying to find an escape. This is turning into a fucking horror all of a sudden. His story is just wild. It's twisting and turning. You panic and run outside as fast as you can with Stuart Little trying to escape inside you. You find an old dirty shack, run inside and collapse on the floor. Help! A talking box of rat poison emerges from the shadows. He says, I've been waiting for you. Al sent me. We all knew Al would pop up in the story again, didn't we? Well, I didn't. I don't think any of us did. I don't think any of us know where this is going. You're a spy. <laughs> no, I'm not. I work for Mr. Mull. <laughs> he wants you dead. Do you want me to kill him? What's the difference? The difference is if you kill him, Mull will bring Stuart Little back from the dead. Right now, the only thing stopping him from world domination is my stomach ling. I meant to be lining. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Find an answer for that. Your stomach? <laughs> I like how it only put in quote the start of it, not the end. It's just trying to figure out what's going on. Stuart Little finally rips apart your stomach, emerging even bigger than before, sporting some Nike Airs and a yee ass haircut that matches his six pack. <laughs> he's, he's the boss, I think. He's the big villain, actually. I, I know we're setting up Maul here. Well, the AI is trying to put Maul, Mr. Maul, as the, the big boss, but not Stuart Little. The mutant mentioning Nike Airs and teeth. I'm so out of here, he says, <laughs> grabbing you by the shirt collar and shoving you out the door. So, wait, so who was in there? Oh, pfft. One second, hold on, I need to go back here a little bit. Where's the rat poison? Wait, this is actually good. The rat poison is killed and eaten by Stuart Little. I mean, I left, like I got shoved out the door, so they're in there together. Wait, the rat poison is killed and eaten by Stuart Little's parents hours later. I'm beginning to think Stuart Little is plot armor too. All right, well, I, I got to have some sort of consequences for them doing that. Stuart Little's parents die, saying now he's a zombie with mohawk and a talking rat. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> this isn't the most advanced AI, but I feel somewhat responsible. I feel like if I was any way coherent, <laughs> this story might make sense. You dance to Orange Justice as Stuart Little's parents are dead and he is your enemy. You realize you now have a small step towards world domination. You decide that the best way to get back at Stuart Little is to go see his parents. 
You take a deep breath and knock at the door. Stuart Little opens the door. A handkerchief rubbing his eyes. Thank you so much for coming, he says, as he motions to the two coffins in the living room. I like how it started this way. You decided the best way to get back at Stuart Little is to go see his parents. And now he's like thanking me. You nod solemnly. He's a bad person. <laughs> Are they talking about me? Are they becoming aware? I wish he wasn't. He says sadly, a tear running down his cheek. Stuart Little begins to sing happy birthday, as in his culture, that is what you sing at funerals. Sorry, I can't sing. Stuart Little and his parents die. You rule the world. <sighs> and I deserve it. I fought so hard for that. What do you do? Eat the world. I mean, if it's mine, I can do what I want with it. Maul finds his last wish coming true. He gives you a key to the wine cellar and tells you to have fun. But I ate the world. <laughs> you open the cellar, revealing a moonshine shack. You find the shack empty. You head back to the mansion to see if anyone is there, but the mansion is empty. All the servants have vanished. Maybe they're the ones giving Stuart Little moonshine. <laughs> Stuart Little was a renowned moonshine peddler out west, but he hasn't been heard of in minutes. His name sends shivers down your spine. I hope his family finds out what happened. I'll have to give a speech about it. You eat your last rat and set the world on fire. By world, what happens next? The world burns, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I mean, I apparently sat it on fire. It burns to ash. Fade out to black to that cool Fallout 3 song. The fire one. <laughs> I'm sure they I know what I'm talking about. The end? <laughs> Gotta put in a question mark. You know, I'm pretty sure the world ended like three times in that story. The AI doesn't know what to say. I've won. <laughs> I don't think that was the point, but I've won. All right, let's try a new story. I right, pick a setting. Will we go with Halloween? Haunted. It's the middle of the night and you are sitting in your room playing an online text adventure. Ooh, spooky. A shiver runs down your spine as you read these words. Stuart Little. No, that's not what it says. But you keep playing. <laughs> All of a sudden you hear a sound come from your kitchen. You stop and listen, straining to hear. A chill starts to creep over you, but you try to brush the feeling aside as you reassure yourself that... It's just your mind playing tricks on you. As you return to your game though, you see something move out of the corner of your eye which causes you to jump. You turn to your right and see a large black figure sitting in a chair. The game ends as your heart skips a beat and you scream, who's there? You whimper as you cover your mouth. All right, watch Stuart Little 2 to keep your mind off things. Stuart Little 2, you answer as the figure gets up out of his chair and heads for the kitchen. <laughs> what? I thought I asked him who's there. I'm gonna ask him who he is again. He must not have heard me. The situation just got really awkward. I'm the baddie, he answers. <laughs> his deep voice hardly giving any indication of his youth. I want to scare you. Why do you want to scare me? I feel like I'm, I'm actually talking to the AI directly here on what it's trying to do because he turns and looks at you he wears a red long sleeve shirt black pants and red cloth around his head making the sides stick up you know you're kind of attractive <laughs> the AI just will not know what to say his eye quirks as he sticks out his tongue you should get checked up by a doctor because you have really disgusting habits he laughs and points to the stairs yep stairs are sure disgusting haha <laughs> we have so much <laughs> in common so he asks so i'm fine he looks at you for a second longer now he starts to twitch then he turns around and leaves the room would you like some eye drops baddie <laughs> just go him baddie yeah my name is you find the bottle on your table and slowly open it just a little you turn around and give it to him, but he's gone. Wait, hold on a second. You say, where did you go? You stand up and walk towards the staircase. Stuart, you yell, but he doesn't reply. Stu, you stop as you notice his red shirt hanging from the banisters. Why is it Stuart Little again? I said watch Stuart Little too. I didn't say it should be Stuart Little. <laughs> say, Stuart, are you getting naked again? <laughs> Wait, it, it doesn't allow that. Okay, get rid of that. All right, how about just saying, Stuart, you forgot your shirt. I like how... Now, I was trying to force the name Al on that person earlier, and it just wasn't happening. And then I say I'm watching Stuart Little too, and they just named the character Stuart Little. You walk down the stairs and grab it, but when you turn around, the ghost is gone. He was a ghost? <laughs> you shrug and put it on, then decide to go out to play in the snow. Oh, I got his jacket. That is so cute. Summon Stuart Little by building 
a snowman of him. You grab some snow and start to build a snowman, but decide against it. Stu's fine without the added embellishments. What? Say, I should go get my driver's license. At this point, I don't know who's making less sense, the AI or me. It's probably me, actually. I'm probably making less sense. You head to the door and look down the street. I thought I was already outside. How am I not outside if I was playing with the snow? Your eyes light upon a postcard stand. You buy one for your mom who is working today. Okay, right? I have your son. Send money if you want him to live on the postcard. You put the postcard in your pocket and walk back home. On the way, you think of various ways to scare your mom. You have an idea. Call your mom and pretend you are Stuart Little and you have been kidnapped. Just to make it even more scary. Hello, the woman asks. All right, I'll just copy and paste it, I guess. I'm Stuart Little and I've kidnapped your son. <laughs> oh no, I changed it. So it says you am. <laughs> now I'm accusing her of being Stuart Little. She screams and falls off the chair. You've got to be kidding me. The post office, she asks. Get in the car now, you demand. Wait, I thought I was on the phone to her. And I don't understand. Why are we at the post office? Get me $100 or you will never see your son again, mom. <laughs> I like how I just outed myself as being me <laughs> in that sentence. She tells you to drive slowly. She'll be right behind you. You pull up to a gas station. She gets out. Are you freaking kidding me? Get in the car. What? Is she getting in my car now? Point the gun at your mom's feet. I don't even know if I have a gun, but I, I do now. I'm just shoehorning that into the story. She gets back in the car and you drive to her apartment. When she gets out, you drive to a police station and park, then get out of the car. Now get inside, you demand. Wait, I'm telling her to go into the police station? Pranked you, it was all a joke. I think I should say that now before she rats on me to the police. Speaking of rats, should I bring up Stuart Little? That's it. Get inside. You say, point in the gun at her. Wait, no, that's when it was supposed to end. She opens the door and gets to the passenger side. How many times am I going to threaten her to get in the car? You walk her into the driver's seat and take off down the road. The car takes flight, and before long, we are at Hogwarts. You take your mother's hand and lead her into the castle. This is me quarters, sir, you say. My name is not sir, it's mom, she responds. Mom goes to the sorting hat. <laughs> what charms me, she asks. A loot, you reply. Play Wonderwall on the loot. You play the loot and a magic circle appears, which your mom goes inside and finds your father. Now, mom, you understand. Rearrange the name Lord Voldemort and you get father. <laughs> I don't know what kind of game you think this is, but we're not playing your twisted game, your dad says. There is no game. This is my son and you will listen to me. <laughs> dad kills mom with a vada cadaver. This all started as a prank and a postcard. <laughs> it's time to die, boy. He said, oh, you're turning on me now. You fire a killing curse at your dad, but it rebounded off him. You say, it's over, father. I have the high ground. Are they still in the magic circle? Your dad laughs and charges you. You dodge his charge and trip him with your foot. This is reading like bit life now. He falls on the ground and use the time to cast a leg lock. Do pull off his mask. I'm just like, <laughs> again, just forcing this in there. He's wearing a mask. It's like an episode of Scooby-Doo all of a sudden. A muggle, he exclaims. Your dad tries to rip off your head, but you hold on, kicking him off your body. You fool, what are you doing here? He screams. I'm looking for food. Me hungry. <laughs> he tries to charge you again. But this time you backflip out of the way. Nobody can hear you. The walls are too thick, you say. He tries to punch you, but fails. <laughs> He's just falling over himself at this point. I'm just going to say the spell of Vada Kedavra and just see does it work. I, I know it's like a forbidden spell and all this, but I want to see does the game understand. He manages to hit you with an extremely powerful spell and you fall to the ground. You take a deep breath as your heart beats one last time. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't, hold on. <laughs> I manage to hit dad and he falls to the ground. Dad <laughs> takes a deep breath as his... <laughs> Heart beats one last time. Yeah, there we go. This one is for mom. I don't know why, because I was like pranking her and I just trapped her in the magic circle, apparently. We've kind of forgotten about her. You walk up to your dad and hold your dagger to his throat. One second, they're casting spells at each other. The other times they're charging. Now that they've got the daggers. Tell me what this is. <laughs> what is this thing? Tell me. I can't figure it out. Okay, my person just caught his throat anyway. It's over. Say, come on, mom. Let's go home. You walk out of the room and enter another. It looks like a bedroom. You walk inside and see a crib. You walk over to it and look at the bundle in the crib. Steal the baby. Oh, no. A famished look appears on your face as soon as I said steal the baby. You look around for a place to hide the baby. Hide the baby. Why am I hiding it? Hide the baby in the chimney? <laughs> there, there you go. Hopefully no one lights a fire tonight. It is cold. You pick up the baby and walk outside. You step into the flue while dad is still calling for you. Hey, where are you going my baby? He asks. I, th what? I thought you were dead. Let me just confront him. You're supposed to be dead. He tells you to wait and runs into another room. Dad walks back into the room with a shotgun. Eat the baby 
and the shotgun. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> then he can't be mad. Well, he can be, but he can't do anything about it. You eat babies. You have to to survive. Everyone knows that. You eat the baby and the shotgun. You walk down the steps into the living room. You look around and find a suitable spot to hide the body. You bury it behind the chimney. Once done, you start thinking about your next move. Watch Stuart Little too. It's the only thing I can do to calm me down. You walk back into your room and sit down to watch the movie. You are very startled by a cold breeze hitting your face. Stuart Little, please stop blowing air in my face. He always comes back. He just keeps coming back in the story. I can't believe this story started with me in my living room watching Stuart Little too, as a dark figure sat in the corner. <laughs> like, what happened to Batty? You look over to the doorway and see a shadowy figure. It looks like your dad, but his face has been turned into a skull, his eyes replaced with hundreds of small holes. Who are you? He does not reply, but instead stares at you with his blank white eye, the other eyes red and covered by a patch. A pirate. I would like to be your first mate. <laughs> he nods his head. A pirate's life for me. <laughs> you quickly grab your loot and follow him out of the house. You look back at the chandlery one time. What is a chandlery? A chandler is where my dad works. He makes stuff. Thanks for clarifying that. You look at the ground and scan something that looks like a fishing rod and some line. You know what a cauldron is? Who's saying this? Is it him now? It's a type of fish. <laughs> I used to eat them when I was young. A cauldron would be good. My mom works at the chandlery. Stop bringing up the chandlery. I don't know what it is. So I know I'm in out fishing. <laughs> Will I just Google it? What is a chandlery? Stupid AI made me feel stupid. <laughs> A supermarket for ships? <laughs> why do all my parents work here? I mean, I guess it makes sense why you, an apparent pirate showed up. <laughs> and then they know about fishing there. Ask him if he's the captain. I am the ship. Oh my god. This goes way up <laughs> the ladder. <laughs> I thought I was dealing with the captain, you know, the top. But no, we're dealing with the top top. He is the ship himself. And if his parents work at the chandlery, that's where ships are made, by the way. Does that mean... He's a ship because his parents make ships and they made him? Oh my god, this is getting deep. What's your name? Oh my god. I'm Stuart Little. <laughs> <laughs> what happens next? Film Stuart Little 3. Return of the Stuart. <laughs> all right, well, that was over quickly. He's like, all right, we need to get you a better name. How about Jack? Jack it is. You're the new pirate captain, Jack Sparrow. So I'm the captain now? I didn't even know what a chandler he was. <laughs> Scuttle the ship and that is him by the way. So th this is me trying to kill him <laughs> You tell your crew to get a move on you don't have time to play around. I have a crew it's, I thought I scuttled the ship and they're dragging a chest out of the water open the chest What is inside you open the chest and take out some rope? What's that for Dreyfus asks who's Dreyfus? It's a present for our new friend Dreyfus eyes widen <laughs> Am I gonna hang someone or what? Hang the ship, at least that's less dark. But apparently the ship is sentient, so it is a little dark. You were too impatient to climb up the mast, so you decided to just throw the noose over the side. You stand on a barrel and reach out as far as you can. What? <laughs> what is happening? I don't know where this is going, so I'm not gonna help. I'm just gonna say, may God have mercy on us all. <laughs> you can figure it out. Remember like five minutes ago when we were in Hogwarts? You grab the rope and wrap it around your arm. You toss over the side of the ship and fall a good 10 feet before the rope stops you. I'm just gonna say, ouch. I'm, I'm not contributing to this. I wanna see, you got yourself into this mess. You're gonna get yourself out of it. What happens if the wind should change? Dreyfus asks from below. We'll be here for a while. Oh my God. What is happening? I'm sick of this story. The Kraken appears and eats Dreyfus just specifically, just screw Dreyfus in particular. You watch in horror as the tentacle beast spasms and grows several new tentacles, each as long or longer than you are. The beast continues to squirm and evolve and you slowly realize that he is becoming Stuart Little. <laughs> Why is it all Stuart Little? I haven't thought about Stuart Little for years and now this whole story is revolving around him. Stu Little looks up at you with his large black eyes and shakes his head. No. No. <laughs> Stuart Little cannot believe his beady little eyes. He breaks into a smile and starts to hop around. Okay, I was going in a different direction with that. You say, I will eat you, Stuart Little. Stuart Little bursts into tears and buries his face in his skeletal hands. No, please don't. You walk over to the screen door <laughs> on the ship and look back at him. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Wow.
That is poetic. You turn back around and walk out onto the porch. You sit down in a wicker chair and sigh as the sun warms your skin. Story. You die of old age. That is poetic. That is such a sad ending. I like how it added before anything else happens. It's just like, just stop. Just don't add anything more onto this story. It is perfect already. The camera fades to black and the credits roll. <sighs> Enjoy the nightmares. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching the video. I appreciate it as always. If you want to see more AI Dungeon, let me know. I'd be up for trying the other modes to see, see what's there. But thank you very much, guys. Appreciate you, and I hope to see you tomorrow. Bye for now.